Welcome to Smarter Circuits. I'm your host, Ian Klein. This is a light switch. So is this. Do you know what they have in common other than turning a light on and off? I don't use them, and I don't think you need to either. There are more reasons than you might think to consider letting your lights decide if and when you need them. In this episode, we'll be covering various methods of occupancy detection. That is, not just knowing when a person is in a room, but how many people are in a room. Not everything I'll be covering in this video is practical for every application yet, but what I really want you to think about is how by using more than one sensor type simultaneously, you can achieve more accurate data or be more confident in the data you have. This is a common approach to things like obstacle detection in robotics and autonomous cars. You can apply this approach in home automation to make a series of inexpensive sensors do inordinately useful things. If you are trying to turn a light on when someone walks into a room, for instance, that's fairly easy you simply use a motion sensor to turn the light on. But when do we turn it back off? We don't want to leave it on, but if the person sits down or becomes still, how do we know when to turn the light off? If the period they are still is always under a reasonable amount of time, you can solve this by adding an off timer. Many great products exist that do exactly that. This is a Shelly motion sensor, and it's one of my absolute favorite devices in my system, next to the relays, of course. These are really impressive. The battery life is reasonable, the reliability is pretty high, and since it's a Shelly, it works with MQTT, which is perfect when you have some potentially sketchy connectivity in places, in addition to being the holy grail of home automation, cloudless integration. Your device, your services. The sensor has all kinds of extras like an off timer and a lux meter, so you can tell if you even need the light in the first place. But even this device is not without some inconveniences. Let's say you have a motion sensor in your bathroom to turn your light on for 15 minutes. If you take a long bath, you're waving your arms to keep the light on. So just increase the time to 30 minutes or more, right? Now, when you're only in the bathroom for a few minutes, you're leaving the light on for more time than you occupy the room. This is obviously suboptimal. Let's add something new. Let's add a brake beam sensor. This is a brake beam sensor. Basically, what you have here is an infrared LED and an infrared photo sensor. If you point the sensor at the LED, then put something between them, preventing the light from reaching the sensor, you can detect a physical object by reading the beam state. This is all simple, and you've probably already seen these on garage doors, if not elsewhere. But this device, along with at least one motion sensor, gives you a more accurate picture of the physical world. You can connect this sensor to a computer or other programmable electronics and make the situation much smarter. Let's consider a brake beam and motion sensor combination. If the beam is broken, then there's motion, someone has walked in. If there's motion, and then the beam is broken, somebody has left. So this is better, but it has a fatal flaw two people, or one person and a dog. Now, many motion sensors have an adjustment to account for pets, but I have a 130-pound American Bulldog. By the time I adjust the sensor so it doesn't see him, it also doesn't see me. The beam helps because you can raise it, but if the dog is in the room before you and he moves before you break the beam, well, you get the idea. So how do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt how many people are in the room? Believe it or not, the answer doesn't even technically require the motion sensor at all. You may already know what I'm about to describe, and if so, clever you, but I'm going to explain it anyway because I'm not very good at singing and I don't know what to do with TikTok. If you use two brake beam sensors, one on the inside of your portal and one on the outside, you now have a digital turnstile of sorts. Astute skeptics will immediately wonder how doors factor in, and it's actually something embedded in the logic that makes no difference if you write it correctly. I'll explain. We have two beams, inside and outside. If the inside beam is broken before the outside, something is moving out and the other way around. But if you were to open a door, it would block one of the sensors. What you can do is mount the sensor at an angle so it crosses the doorway from a point on the door header near the hinge side to a point on the receiving jam about a foot from the floor. This way, the door only momentarily blocks the beam as it swings open, but a human would break both beams. Now, let's look at the state of both beams each time one of their states change. We'll say our door is mounted on the inside and we're walking out. Right now, we have unbroken beams on the inside and outside. We'll call that 0, 0. Now, as we open the door, the state on the inside beam changes and we have 1, 0. But as it swings away, we have 0, 0 again. This is important. When we walk through the door, as we move in, we break the inner beam, which gives us 1, 0 again. But instead of getting 0, 0 again, we block both beams for a short period, giving us 1, 1. 
At this point, we can be sure the subject is moving out even without the 0, 1 we'll get before we get 0, 0 again. If we remember our last state and ignore it when we get anything but 1, 1, we'll always get 1, 0 or 0, 1 and know the direction of travel. Now, we just need to keep a count and add when we see 0, 1 before 1, 1 and subtract when we see 1, 0 before 1, 1. These are the sensors from earlier, but they won't work. They're just too small. These are great for applications where you only need about a foot or so of clearance, or if you want to detect some infrared in general, I actually use one of these to detect direct sunlight in the game room, but these are what we need for this application because they're more powerful LEDs. You can also set them to a specific frequency, which is not related to the light wavelength, but rather the frequency that the LEDs pulse so the sensor can distinguish its specific partner. I would think it also cuts down on other infrared interference, but you may still have some weird readings if they're in direct sunlight. This can be helped by attaching a light blocking tube to the sensor, but even that will only help so much in the direct sun. These devices use approximately 20 milliamps at most, so I'm powering them with a rechargeable 9 volt. I'll be posting a benchmark on how long these last later, but I expect them to perform nicely. I'm using my friend the Raspberry Pi for this and powering it from the wall because it's preferred. You could build this same logic into something much less power hungry, but this worked well for demonstrative purposes. I'll post some wiring diagrams on the site as well as some sample code in the Git repo. I won't be doing many code videos again. So there you have it. This isn't perfect for every situation, but if you can do it, it's one of the most precise ways I've found to count people in a room without getting crazy with computer vision, which I'll also be doing in another video someday in the not too distant future. I would love it if Alterco Robotics, the company behind the Shelly product line, would watch this video and make a packaged version of this dual beam directional people detector designed to be more aesthetically pleasing, space saving, and perhaps battery operated, but that's not likely to happen. They could even cheat and use retro reflectors so all the electronics could live in the unit above the door frame. The reflectors could even be fairly small and all you would need to do to align it would be a fine adjustment screw since most doorways are reasonably square. I'll stop now. I have a lot of ideas about ways of applying this device in almost any situation where you want to control circuits by room or even region. I might even do a video about it with different versions of these as further proof of concept in various architectural use cases. This is not a new concept, but I think it could be made elegant enough for standardized use in knowing how many people are in what rooms. Think of the fire safety applications, let alone simply turning lights on and off. I'll stop digressing and end the episode now. I do hope you enjoyed the video, and of course if you did enjoy it and haven't already done so, please do subscribe to the channel. If you want to know what's going on between episodes, you can follow Smarter Circuits on Twitter at Circuits Smarter, and if you'd like to help make more and better videos possible, consider becoming a patron on our Patreon page linked below. Thanks for listening to me ramble, and I do hope you'll join me for future videos as I continue building Smarter Circuits.